The centrifugal mirror fusion experiment was set up to test models and theories that have been created over the years by our group, colleagues that we've worked with, and other groups. And this machine is actually the second generation experiment here at Maryland. And the purpose is to test these theories that predict that the centrifugal mirror concept can be a net energy gain fusion machine. The centrifugal mirror experiment is a, a magnetic mirror, or a magnetic bottle, or trap you could say, composed of two cylindrical coils. And what makes this different is that we're using an electrode that's placed down the center axis to cause an E cross B drift to get the plasma to rotate. If you make the plasma rotate, the rotation actually helps stabilize and any bulging or any instability that wants to push out the particles actually gets destroyed by this rotation. And so that's the main innovation of this experiment, to add that supersonic rotation to stabilize them. And it also adds the benefit that you can confine more particles better at higher temperatures. And again, our models predict that you can do that all the way to a thermonuclear reactor. Resistive magnets are not generally considered viable for actual fusion experiments, but the goal, at least with this bitter magnet, is to generate sort of fusion-relevant field conditions to do plasma experiments in. I know some of the higher magnetic fields are produced by superconducting magnets or hybrid types, but the bitter magnet is something that we felt we could do and produce actually a magnetic mirror similar to what we have here at CMFX. Fusion is much harder than fission because of time scales and also length scales. In fission, instabilities happen in matters of seconds or minutes, and so you have time to react with very basic machines, even at human time scales. You can adjust knobs, you can lower uh, bars, etc. In fusion, those time scales can be as short as milliseconds or, or much less, depending on the type of fusion device you're working on. And the length scales can vary enormously too. They can go from micrometers or less to meters, and instabilities can grow very quickly from very, very small to very large in a very short amount of time. And so it has been that wide range of scales in stabilizing that has been very difficult. So it's about controlling or stabilizing plasmas to get there, and fusion has proven to be a lot more challenging. Than fishing. I think one of the most difficult part of this kind of project is working with plasma is the diagnostic part. Basically is the fact that you cannot just poke plasma and learn things about it without destroying it. So there's the whole this field of diagnostics that you know was developed just to learn what's happening inside. Normally you tweak some, some parameters and then see the outcome of it. Over here one of the biggest challenges is to see what happened, how did your poking, your changes affected the system itself. Just generally measuring these plasmas, uh, you've got to implore multiple means. Like in our case here, I'm sitting right next to the Princeton Instruments camera. That's an intensified CCD camera. That is a gated camera that's able to trigger when the experiment fires. And it has a gate width that is short in comparison to the actual experiment. So you could actually synchronize it to multiple points in the experiment to look at the shot as it's evolving. We also couple that through fiber optics to the experiment to look at different cords in the experiment. So you can look at different locations of the density spectrum of the experiment. We also use laser for interferometry, for Thomson scattering. Uh, we use magnetic loops to couple to the plasma as it's moving in the chamber itself. Designing the magnets was a kind of a tricky iterative process. We went through several generations from resistive magnets, which is how the predecessor experiment was designed through designing a setup of custom superconducting magnets to the repurposed MRI configuration we have now. And what I think is you know, very impressive about this project is the way it came together and the ingenuity that the team had to have to get it together in the timeline that we did. So the importance of having students, postdocs, young faculty is imperative, especially here at the university. We're educating the next generation of engineers, scientists. You're leaving that mark behind. I'm excited about the future because I see the results we are getting right now are showing that there is a path to a reactor. I'm excited because I've been working on this for many years and fusion is very important. It's considered the ultimate source of energy. It's an exciting time for everyone because there's also more generalized interest and more appetite for investment, which gives us the support and tools that we need to continue onto a bigger machine to actually get to the end goal of demonstrating net energy gain.